In this video, we will look at part two of how to create the simulation practice slide. So we've already created the main elements here. We have the avatar, the instructional text, the two buttons, the juggling balls, and these arms that we've placed here just to show um, more of a perspective from the learner's point of view. So now I want to show you how to create the hotspot areas that will go over top of where these juggling balls will be thrown to. The reason why we're using hotspots is so that when the learner goes to click on a ball, if they just clicked on the ball as is right now, nothing would happen. The hotspot helps to trigger the ball to move. So it becomes the area that the person will click on. And then we set triggers to move the balls along the arc motion paths. So let's go up here to insert hotspot. And I'm going to choose the oval ones here. And then I'm going to just start by drawing over top of the yellow one here. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to kind of cover that area. And then you can just move it. Another trick. So right now it's quite oval. If you hit shift, it'll make it more circular. So shift and then drag. Okay. And then I'll move that back over. There, and now I got the crosshairs, so I'll leave it like that. Now let's copy that for the other balls. And now this is hotspot two. Hotspot two, we want to be over here on the green ball, because that's the second one they should be clicking on. So I'm gonna put that over here. Now control V again. This will be hotspot three. So we have to do it in the order, the correct order, because it'll make it easier when we're setting up the triggers. So that's hotspot three. So this is one, the yellow ball gets thrown over here. Then the green ball, hotspot two gets clicked and then hotspot three. And then we repeat, but in the opposite direction. So let's create another hotspot. And I'm going to move this hotspot over here because it's going to be the one that's going to be opposite the yellow ball because we threw the yellow ball over here. Now we need to throw it back. Now I'm going to probably have to adjust this because I want it to line up with the yellow ball. So I'm going to move a couple of these things down. So just bear with me for a second. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. So the yellow ball will go over here. This is its domain, so to speak. And now we'll create another hotspot. And this will be for the green ball. So it's going to be here. Approximately. I don't really want the hotspots overlapping, so I'm just going to make sure they're not overlapping here. Okay. And then the last hotspot will be for the blue ball. So it needs to be over here so that it'll be where the blue one will have to go all the way over here. Now there may be other ways to do this, but this is just a, a quick way to create a bit of a practice kind of simulation slide using juggling balls. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that for now. I may adjust this in a bit once we get the arc motion paths going, because it's hard to know how it's going to look. So now I want to see what these arc motion paths are that are already on these balls because we copied it. And that's the beauty of it. We copied it from a slide that already had arc motion paths set. So we need to just tweak them now. So go over to animations and you can see the arc motion paths here already set on the balls, but we want to just adjust these a bit. So I want to be able to see these arc motion paths here. Here we go. Okay. So now click on 
one of the arc motion paths for the yellow ball. And we want to set it so that they're going over this way, so not in this direction. So we just need to move them like this. And we really only need two of them. So we can figure out which ones are the first ones. Let's see what number this is. You can right click. Okay, that's arc motion path three that we're clicked on right now. And let's see what this one is. That's one. So that's probably one we want to keep. We want to get rid of three. So I'm going to just delete three. Just make sure it's the right one. And then just delete it. And now move one over there. So we should have one and two here now. All right, so we have those ones there. Let's just make sure that they're in the right directions here. So two should be going from this side. That's two and it's going that way because the green arrow points that way. So I think we're okay for the yellow one now. So let's look at the green one. So what arc motion path is this? That's six. So if those were one, two, three, we don't really want six. We just need four and five. So I'm going to delete this one. And this one is arc motion path five. So let's just move that. So it's going to face going this way. I'm also going to adjust that up so they're in this going to the same height. And then this one here should be four. So four, we want to go from the left side to the right side. And that's correct because it has the green arrow on it. And again, I'm going to extend that up. And now let's look at the blue ball here. So this is arc motion path nine. So we can delete that one because it's the third one. We don't need it. And which one is this? Arc motion path eight. So that's the one that goes in the opposite direction. So we always created it so that our first one went from the initial state to the other side, right? And then the next one goes back. So if this one is eight, then this is our one that goes backwards. So let's just extend that up again. And this one will be our first one here. Arc motion path seven going from the right hand to the left. I'm going to review this in a second. I know it's a little complicated. Okay, so to recap, what we did here is we took three juggling balls that already had arc motion paths on them, and they each had three arc motion paths that we had set before. So for the yellow ball, we had arc motion path one, two, and three. But because we're doing a simulation where we only really need to show the ball moving from the right hand to the left, and then the left to the right, or vice versa, we don't need three arc motion paths for each of these. We only need two, just showing one direction and then the other direction. And I'll show you that in a minute. So we deleted out the third arc motion path for each of these juggling balls. So for the yellow ball, we deleted out arc motion path three. And then we just extended the arc motion paths for arc motion path one and two for the yellow ball. And they should be in the right direction already because they were already set from before. So we just visually inspected that. And then for the green ball, we did a similar thing. We deleted out the third arc motion path and we extended the arc motion paths so that they reached over to the hot spot that we want it to go to. And then we visually inspected to make sure they're going in opposite directions, which they are. And then similarly for the blue ball, we deleted out the third arc motion path. So in this case, it was arc motion path nine. And then we kept the other two and we extended them out. And we also extended them up so they're all 
going to reach the same height. So the yellow ball is going over to this hotspot here. Always. So it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth. The green one is always going to go to this hotspot here. Back and forth. And the blue ball is always going to go to this hotspot. That way we can control it a bit more, although it may not look as realistic, but it's just a simulation, just a practice slide. Okay, so now we're going to create the slide layer that's going to go with this hint button here. So I'm going to go up here to insert slide layer. And then I'm going to go down here to the right and rename it. I'm just going to call it hint. So now we're on that slide layer and I'm going to insert a text box and I'm going to type in the text box yellow, green, blue. And then I'm going to make the color of each of these words the same color as what they state. So yellow, I'm going to make yellow. and then green, and then our blue color. And then I'm going to move that down and I'm just going to extend that out a bit. Line it up. So I'm just going to move that over slightly. Okay, so that's ready. Now let's go back to the main slide. So now we're going to create the triggers that have to go with all these elements on the screen. So go over here to the right. And Storyline has already kind of put in some triggers that we have to then configure. So let's go configure those now. So let's click here. Button one is our hint button. So let's click add trigger like it has right here. And we're going to then show layer hint when the user mouse is over this button. So we're going to go to show layer, our hint layer, when the user mouse hovers over. Okay. And for button two, this is our reset slide. So we want it to come back to this slide. So we're basically going to set a trigger to jump to slide and then we're going to jump to the same slide. So choose simulation when the user clicks button two. Okay. And to go along with that trigger there, go down here and right click on properties. And you see where it says when revisiting automatically decide, let's change that to reset to initial state and then okay. All right, now for the hotspots. So hotspot one. So remember we created these in the order that would make it easier for us to do these triggers. So hotspot one, we want to move oval one. So let's go up here to edit. We're going to move. oval one. So that should be our yellow ball and you can see it highlighting there. Along our commotion path one. So that will be the one that goes from her right hand to her left. When the user clicks hotspot one. Now hotspot two. Edit. We're going to move oval two, and you can see it highlighting there along arc motion path four. So that's its first arc motion path when the user clicks hotspot two. Hotspot three, edit. We're going to move oval three, the blue one, 
along Arc Motion Path 7 when the user clicks Hotspot 3. Hotspot 4, so this is the motion for coming back to the original position for Oval 1 or the yellow ball. So we're going to edit, move, Oval 1 along Arc Motion Path 2 when the user clicks Hotspot 4. Hotspot 5, edit. We're going to move Oval 2 along Arc Motion Path 5 when the user clicks Hotspot 5, so the opposite direction. And Hotspot 6, edit. Move Oval 3 along Arc Motion Path 8 when their user clicks Hotspot 6. Okay, so all the Hotspot triggers are configured. Now let's go set these play triggers and then we will preview this slide, make sure it works, and adjust it if we need to. So the next slide is going to be our summary slide, so hit summary. And the previous slide was knowledge check 2. Alright, so that's all configured. Now don't forget to save. And one last thing before we preview, let's go over to the timeline. And just see how far these are extending out. We just want them to extend out to at least 60 seconds. I think everything is probably good. Yep, we're good there. So let's go preview this slide now. I'm just previewing the whole thing and we'll just navigate to it. All right, so here we are. So if I mouse over the hint, you can see that it shows yellow, green, blue. So now I know, oh, okay. So I have to click on the yellow ball, then the green, then the blue, then yellow, green, blue. All right, so it is working. The only thing I might do is maybe move this one in a bit, so this hotspot, this area. So we'll go tweak that, and then hit reset, and it goes back to the beginning. So I'm going to just adjust a couple of these hotspots here. I'm just going to go over to animations here just to make sure these are still lined up for the arc motion paths. And one last thing I'm going to adjust, I'm going to highlight the whole thing, just the ball animations here. And I'm going to just move them slightly to the left and maybe a bit up. Actually, let's see what that looks like first. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Now you could adjust this even more, but remember it's just a practice slide. So you could keep tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it, but you get the idea of what we're trying to do here. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create the summary slide, which will be pretty much the same as our learning objective slide, just with a few extra elements added in. Mm -hmm.